Hey guys, this is Watch from the MW Network, and today we're going to be doing a review for the Toshiba Thrive. Uh, this is a pretty recent tablet that uh, just came out a couple of weeks ago. We finally got our hands on it, and we'll do a uh, full review on it. So let's get right into it. Stay tuned. We'll start this review by taking a look at the overall ergonomics and the physical design of this product. Uh, you can see that it is shaped on uh, kind of a 16 by 10 aspect ratio making it great for watching movies and perhaps surfing the web, uh, but it also makes it kind of awkward to hold in that landscape format, especially when you're using the keyboard. In terms of physical dimensions, the Toshiba Thrive just weighs under 1.66 pounds, making it a bit heavier than most of the tablets that are out there. The landscape or width of the product is 10.75 inches and the height of the product is 7 inches. In terms of the thickness or the depth, it's actually rated at 0.63 inches, making it a little bit thicker than most of the tablets that are out there. Now if we talk about ergonomics and how this thing feels in your hand, overall it's alright. I mean, if you look at most tablets out there, most of them are kind of uncomfortable if you hold them for more than two hours, and this is really no exception. The one nice thing about this tablet is at the back you have a very nice rubberized textured uh, finish which makes it a lot easier to grip and uh, a lot less resistant to fingerprints as well too. Overall the biggest downside towards this tablet is its overall shape, It's although it's great for for watching movies and maybe YouTube videos in that 16 by 10 aspect ratio but when we start looking at uh, typing with this thing for long periods of time or using it for web pages it's extra long kind of shape doesn't really make sense compared to some of those more square tablets but again for some people they may prefer this longer design than some of those square tablets so it is kind of a personal preference However, even though the Toshiba Thrive is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than most tablets that are out there, one of the best things about it is its functionality in terms of how many ports it has along its physical exterior. When held in landscape mode, at the bottom of the device is located a serial port dock connection, as well as two small speakers located on both sides of the device. On the top left of the device contains the most important buttons that you're going to be using to operate this thing. The first button is the power and standby. The one right next to it is the volume rocker. And then right next to it is a orientation lock. Located just to the top right of the device is a great standard SD card slot, which is capable of expanding the tablet's memory to up to 128 gigabytes. On the left side of the device contains a small locking switch. On the opposite side of the device on the right side contains a little flap that you have to remove. Once removes reveals a mini USB port, a full size HDMI connection, and a full size USB 2.0 connection. These are extremely useful and very unique to this tablet. Just beside that array of ports lies a standard 3.5mm headphone jack and a power connection. At the front of the device there are no buttons or anything making it fairly clean and minimalistic and there is a 2 megapixel front facing camera. And at the back of the device lies a pretty decent 5 megapixel camera. Now let's get into some of the serious stuff. In terms of technical specifications, this tablet runs an NVIDIA Tegra 250 processor, which is clocked in, in 1 GHz and has 1 MB of L2 cache memory. The screen of the Toshiba Thrive is measured at 10.1 inch diagonally, and the aspect ratio is 16 by 10, and it uses a TFT Active Matrix color LCD display with a LED backlit. The resolution of the LCD panel is actually 1280 by 800 and it's capable of replicating 16 million colors. In terms of how this display looks like in real life, it really reflects some of its specifications. The colors are fairly vibrant, saturated, the sharpness levels of text, photos, and videos is also pretty darn good, making the overall visual experience fairly high quality. In terms of sensors, it actually has a gyroscope, a accelerometer, ambient light sensor, GPS, and a digital compass. In terms of communication specifications, this tablet is really fully featured as you would expect from a modern day computing device. It has both Bluetooth version 2.1 and Broadcom 802.11b 
G and N Wi-Fi connectability. And the overall process of connecting to any kind of Wi-Fi network is fairly easy and straightforward. After using this device for a couple of days and testing out the battery life and recharge times, I managed to get an average of six to seven hours of battery life. Uh, I'm sure you can get better if you monitor how many things are running in the background and make sure you're on top of applications that don't need to be running. And the nice thing about Android, it has a good management system for you to do that. Keep in mind that this tablet does also run Flash, although Flash is fairly efficient overall compared to its desktop counterpart. Uh, it does definitely affect battery life and it also makes the device increasingly hot. Uh, one of my worries about in the future when owning this tablet for a long time is the problem what the heat will do in terms of damaging some of the silicone parts in there and uh, the heat management uh, should be probably improved in the later models. In terms of the operating system, this actually runs Android Honeycomb 3.1, and if you've never used Android 3.1 or any of the Android uh, operating systems, uh, what you find is that it's fairly easy to get into, although it is a lot more deeper and much more customizer than some of the iOS devices and webOS, it is very fully featured and has some great benefits that some of those other operating systems don't have. In terms of running application and using the device on a day-to-day -day basis, thanks to that Tegra 250 processor, uh, everything runs really snappily. The response of the touchscreen and the overall web browsing experience is uh, fairly quick as well too. If I had to complain with anything, I would say that when you're watching Flash video, it does become a little jittery. And even though the connection of the video has buffered and everything is good, it sometimes takes a little while to get the processor up to speed for what's happening in that flash video. This is extremely noticeable when you have a pretty uh, high detailed video that might be encoded on a higher bit rate. Uh, so it definitely has a problem with that compared to some of those other tablets that use non-flash mediums. Currently, the Toshiba Thrives comes in three different versions. You have the 8, 16, and 32 uh, gig versions. The nice thing is, thanks to the SD card slot, you can buy the 8 gig, which is under $400, and basically expand the memory up to 128 gigabytes. One of the best parts of this tablet, in my opinion, is the fact that it has that array of ports at the side of the device. Thanks to its HDMI connection, you can take a standard HDMI port to directly connected into your TV and directly connected into the Toshiba Thrive and basically right then and there mirror your display which is great for presentations uh, or if you want to watch movies with other people and thanks to its Tegra 2 processor and the fact that it has SD and thumb drive capabilities you could just play movies or photos or share any kind of documents uh, straight then without using any kind of other device. Making this a much more closer to a laptop or computer replacement than most of the tablets that are out there in the market. Additionally, one of the greatest things about this device is its support for other peripheral um, devices such as a keyboard and mouse. If you love using a keyboard and mouse in terms of browsing the internet, uh, thanks to Android, it has a capability of you can actually use a mouse cursor, use different keyboard shortcuts to make the uh, overall computing experience a lot more enjoyable and a lot more serious than other tablets that are out there and when you're done with all that you could just take out the usb and use it as a regular touchscreen device there are many great things about this device additional to these aspects but if we just briefly talk about some of the things that might be in room for improvement if Toshiba wants to make a next generation version of this. Uh, firstly, I think the size and the weight should be improved drastically. Uh, as we mentioned, it is a little bit heavier than most of those tablets out there and it is thicker as well too. So in terms of physical dimensions, if you can slim it down, make it a little more linear, uh, that would definitely improve a lot of those physical aspects of it. Another thing that should be improved for later models is better heat management systems. Uh, this is going to be increasingly important once you start slimming down the size and how to manage heat um, in a very innovative way. This is going to be a real test of time when these new tablets are going to come out in the future. Um, this is of course going to be alongside with better software as developers create more efficient versions of Flash and better HTML support. Then uh, you should be seeing 
a great increase in battery life and also the heat will also decrease alongside with all those factors. Another downside towards this device are these LED lights that are located at the front of the device itself uh, which can get pretty distracting uh, when they flash and uh, can get annoying when you're using this thing for a long time. But overall, to conclude, I think this is a fantastic uh, tablet device. Toshiba really did a great job with matching the standards to really compete against some of those other devices. Uh, it has some great unique features that a lot of the other tablets don't have, and it definitely has some downsides that other tablets do improve upon. But the great thing about it is really the price. I think if you buy this for under the $400 mark in terms of buying a current tablet, it's really fantastic. And since you have the uh, option to expand the memory on this, I believe it's really a no-brainer once you start looking at the price and specifications and start comparing some of the features to other tablets that are there in the market. But overall, one of the most important points is you have to go and try this thing out for yourself. And uh, you could definitely compare it to some other tablets that are out there. We will be testing this Toshiba Thrive against the HP Touchpad and the iPad 2 in terms of making those direct comparisons. So make sure to subscribe and watch out for those videos in the very near future. Hey guys, so thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions about anything I talked about, uh, let me know in the comments down below or message us on YouTube. Uh, as well, we're going to be doing some direct comparisons between the Toshiba Thrive and some other popular tablets such as the iPad 2 and the HP Touchpad. So make sure to subscribe to get those videos and to get all of our latest tech reviews. Uh, and so make sure to subscribe to everything like this video. And again, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Uh, there's some great, there's always some great comments out there and we thank every one of you who enjoy our videos and we're going to keep doing the best we can and improving our quality, improving our content as much as possible. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Take care.